I'm so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. The first step in this mechanism is likely one that you've seen before, where you can protonate the oxygen on a carbonyl species using an acid. So following protonation of that carbonyl oxygen, what we've done is we've turbocharged the electrophilicity of the carbon that is attached to this carbonyl oxygen. So importantly now, we have made this carbon position very susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So actually what can happen is this carboxylic acid group can actually act as a nucleophile, where we have this OH which has a lone pair of electrons, and it can attack this carbonyl oxygen carbon to move up the electrons to this oxygen atom. And this is actually how we close that ring. So now importantly, we have made a new five-membered ring at that position where we have generated at least part of our final product. So now importantly, we have now made this an OH group. We still have our methyl group here, and now we have our oxygen which is closing that five-membered ring at this position. However, this oxygen is going to be positively charged because it still contains that extra hydrogen, giving it three bonds. So what will happen next is actually going to be a proton transfer between this hydroxyl group and this OH, which has a positively charged oxygen. So that intramolecular proton transfer, which I'll just write as PT, ends up making the other oxygen positively charged, which is how we end up with our next step, which is going to result in removing one of those groups. So now that we have made this oxygen neutral, we have made this other oxygen positively charged, because remember we did a proton transfer from here to this location. So now what's going to happen is the electrons now located on this oxygen can come in, form a double bond, and kick off our water as a good leaving group because it was positively charged. So now the product of this reaction is starting to look very close to what our final product is. However, it's missing one key ingredient. So we have our methyl group here. We have a carbon to oxygen double bond, which makes this positively charged. And then the rest of our five-membered ring with our carbonyl group. And the solvent in this reaction was methanol. So actually methanol will now come in and act as a nucleophile to attack this carbon position to free up these pi electrons. So that's what's going to happen. Those electrons will attack at this carbonyl carbon position, moving these electrons back over here to give us our neutral next intermediate, which is now going to contain our benzene ring, we now have our five-membered ring here with a neutral oxygen, and now we have our part of the methanol, which is going to be positively charged, attached, and this is beginning to look like what's ultimately our final product following deprotonation of this positively charged oxygen, which contains this acidic proton. So remember, we liberated water here, so that water can now come in and deprotonate that species to give us our final product, which is going to be neutral. So ultimately, there's a lot of very quick intramolecular or intermolecular proton transfers that allow for this reaction to occur. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop it as a comment down below if you have any ideas, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.